<laughs> so I would just love to talk to the two of you about what it's like working with someone like Steven Spielberg. Uh, you both have worked with him before in the past several times. And I just wondered if you could talk about your collaboration with him, and in particular on Lincoln, a film that requires so much research uh, in order to begin production. So. Well, I'll start with that. If, if, um, I think I should. Okay. <laughs> um, the, what's interesting is like someone like Steven Spielberg, Actually, there isn't anyone like Steven Spielberg. That's what that was is one of the things that makes it really interesting. That's not to say that there aren't other great directors, and I've certainly worked with some really great directors. We both work with Bob Zemeckis a lot, which is another joy that we've had in our lives. Um, Jim Cameron has been in my life, but Steven has a way of directing, even when he's not literally telling you what to do. And that's, that's one of the, the things that all great directors have to some degree. But he has it in an innate, very, very deep way, which is the ability to create a, not just an atmosphere for, for creativity, but to surround himself with people that get on a wavelength and then can fulfill his vision, also have their own vision to come back to him to make it better than the sum of the parts. And he said to me literally one time, some of my best ideas are not my own. Mm -hmm. And it, he means it. He's open to what you have to bring to the table, aesthetically, intellectually, whatever the idea is, it helps make his movie richer. He'll tell you when it doesn't work, or he'll come up with the point of reference he wants you to start with. But I think that there's a way that over the years I've been able to, and so has Joanna, to get on a wavelength where we actually collaborate with him and can still fulfill our own artistic visions and feel we're all part of this, this sort of cohesive whole. So for me, I started on Lincoln uh, in 2001 and it went through many iterations to get to the final version that you saw. And it was a matter of always trying to track what the purpose of this whole project would be, which would be ultimately a portrait of Lincoln that from the inside out would resonate. So all the choices that have to do with what's important in the movie, the, the um, office set that he had, the whole upstairs, everything that we did, we prioritized based upon what was important, but not in an intellectual bean counting way, more of an emotional aesthetic way, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. That's my riff on what it's like to work for someone like Steven Spielberg. I'm actually going to add on to that, uh, is that I think Rick, for Steven, brings in a massive amount outside his own patch. Mm -hmm. That's what I would say. And I think that Rick has got this extraordinary expansiveness of, of visualization, which um, I think Steven absolutely adores, actually. Mm -hmm. I only come in on my own little area with Steven. Yeah, it's only it's only <laughs> like it's only like how is the main characters look, mm -hmm. and then everybody else. Yeah, it's kind of not that important. I don't really think if you think about how many movies are sold about looking at background mm -hmm. and really enjoying. I'm being facetious here. <laughs> um, I'm, not, I'm saying we care about this, and then from here we look beyond mm -hmm. and. We see how the character looks, and not and how they're acting. Of course, matters the most, and what they're doing. What's the narrative? But once you move away from those first two primary things, if you just think about making a silhouette for Lincoln in this movie, how important it is. It's got a variety of iterations, but at no time do you mistake who you're looking at in a, in a frame. And you don't have to be up on his on his face to do that. That's such a great way to think about it, really. Um, so the two of you have worked together quite a bit. I wonder if you could talk about the relationship between a production designer and a costume designer, or any, you know, how, how the two of you collaborate to make everything feel of a piece, uh, you know, color schemes. Uh, <laughs> well, I, you know, I have to this. say, when I first met Rick, which was quite a long time ago, we had lunch when we were doing um, Bob's Mecca's is uh, about to fuse two. <laughs> and Rick was wearing, I'd just come to America kind of for the first time to work. He was wearing rose tinted glasses, and I remember going, heavens, you know. How's he going to make a color choice? <laughs> How's he going to make a color <laughs> choice throughout the whole film? I wondered that myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
I actually, no, I did, but you know, that is the color choice. The color choice is <clears throat> to be optimistic. That's not to say I didn't do this, and it's not to say that I didn't screw up some major choices that I suffered for on that movie, which I, if that was a longer interview and about a different thing I would tell you about. <laughs> but the, really the thing to say is that we collaborate both in what we talk about, but also because we've done this for a while. I just think there's some way that we complement each other and that we enjoy each other and then we probably talk in a way like, you know, I'm doing this, is this going to be okay? Yeah, that, 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 that's good. But it's also something about letting it be and happen because you, you want something to ultimately to come together. Aesthetically, I don't think you want it to be, I don't ever like it when it just looks like it all came with some immaculate conception and there it is all of one moment in time or even some short period of time. Yeah, I love it when it comes as a layered proposition, it comes together, but did you feel like things have existed before this movie and they will exist after? And you're catching it at that time when the movie is being made. And there's a sort of eclectic quality, and, and, and that's not a shallow term as it can be utilized by some. It's like saying the Beatles are eclectic and thus that's shallow. No, it's multi-layered. And I think in this particular movie, we didn't go so broad as we went um, deep. Right. Last question. Okay. Uh, sorry. I'm sorry. Um, I read somewhere that uh, during the production of this, you had a, a calendar of uh, every day in the life, in uh, Lincoln's life. Is that correct? That's right. Okay. Um, can you talk about the kinds of research that you did, uh, both in costumes and in production design? Uh, to create that kind of authenticity and uh, in order to create this calendar. That's so interesting. Uh, well, I would it. just say, to answer briefly and to let her do more for, the, for that, that because we knew about Lincoln as a president who was photographed, there were some photographs to go from, both him and Mary, mm -hmm. but also we knew what had happened on the, in, the, in the days, the last days of his life. So we were able to detail a lot of the things that were in the office to reflect what was really happening at that particular time, whether it's a map or a newspaper or a letter or something that would have actually been in his office. So we paid a lot of attention to that in order to make the best possible environment for the president to operate in. But I think specifically Joanna should say what she did because she's the one to create the characters. Well, I think I, if I just talked about Lincoln, I. Um the Matthew Brady photographs were absolutely key for me, and you know Lincoln was photographed profusely by Brady, and um, they're very beautiful. And I got captivated by this thing of the space between the body and the cloth. There was this empty space, this kind of void between this kind of skinny, lanky, you know, man, and and this slightly loose kind of um, uh, not very well presented clothing he used to wear and I, I I really wanted to help create this space but also feel the man so this was a sort of one of the many um, complex contradictions in a way that this film delivered and uh, uh, kind of a, a billowy lean silhouette <laughs> so, <laughs> it's kind of hangy quality yeah but it and comes across, don't you think? Bit, 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 I mean, that's you know, the worst thing about clothing is that if you do it just too much, it'll look like, oh, you can't even get the clothes to fit properly. So it's it's, it's right. such a fine line, you know, that you do it so that it's not drawing too much time. I am the President of the United States clothed in immense clothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You will procure me a new wardrobe, <laughs> please, so I can be more presidential. What didn't you get about <laughs> I need to do it in part two. I'll get it right on the next one. Lincoln, part Lincoln, two. Lincoln the tailored band. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. I really wish I had more time. Yeah.